Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. Our next generation of quality is really with us today. And they're here getting real world exposure to using analytics. They are learning about the benefits of proactivity in the industry and how much the industry really can't tolerate many mistakes. So I stress the importance of what we do, how vital they are to the process as people. And my hope is that they are holding on to all these lessons. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, how can proactive compliance transform quality in clinical trials? Discover the innovative approach to quality in clinical trials that transforms compliance from a reactive to a proactive model. In this X Talk Spotlight edition, I sat down with Steve Begley, Chief Compliance Officer at Y Prime, who shared his groundbreaking approach to quality in clinical trials. With a deeply personal commitment to improving patient lives, Steve has revolutionized compliance at Y Prime, transitioning from reactive, defect focused approaches to a proactive, preventative model. Through data-driven insights, collaborative partnerships, and a focus on user-centric design, Steve has achieved remarkable feats, including closing corrective and preventive actions, or CAPA investigations, 50% faster than the industry average, and accelerating the delivery of vital therapies to patients in need. Thank you for taking the time for this Spotlight interview, Steve. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. To start us off, what inspired your proactive approach to compliance and how does it differ from traditional reactive methods? Well, seeing smaller items that occurred randomly made it feel almost as if we were playing a game of whack-a-mole. And that didn't really seem like it was a very efficient manner to go about things. So rather than taking that reactive approach to everything, we decided to look at a truly proactive approach. And that allowed us to forecast things based on what we knew. And this approach was quite different from what others in the industry were doing based on my previous experiences and the experiences of some folks that have joined us over the years. So we spent some time going through all of our projects one by one, and we determined some areas that could potentially be problematic based on our experience and our project knowledge and then those things we documented, we assigned them to people for resolution. We created dashboards internally to track them. And then we created meetings to follow up on those items to ensure they were being closed out. And changing to this method of quality management allowed us to stay ahead of what could become problematic and address it in advance of any quality events occurring in the future. Now, in an industry where delays can be costly and jeopardize patient safety, how have you achieved the feat of consistently closing CAPA investigations within just 30 days? So having an automated dashboard internally that shows all of our CAPAs, their activities with statuses for corporate consumption, um, and it allows the owners internally to track through to completion all the statuses and then the statuses of each of those kappas and their respective actions are then reviewed weekly with executive team membership and we are able to then provide support as needed throughout the process of closing these things out and further to this the kappa owners actually have the opportunity to meet with all the departments at a daily stand-up and what that stand-up meeting does is it allows them to review progress among themselves they're able to request any additional support or follow up, and then they're able to communicate what the status is as they move throughout. So our mission with this was really to remove all the concerns from any sponsors, whether they were existing sponsors or potential sponsors, our vendors, sites, patients, and so on, uh, so that the name y Prime could really be associated with the best quality and not just the quality of our products, but the quality of our people and the relationships working through those products. And how have you leveraged data-driven insights to drive continuous improvement in quality processes? While we do have an internal AI team that 
is doing some development work to provide some support to our team. Uh, we also have an internal quality systems and analytics group that takes the data from across the organization and it pulls out the data from our projects and it gives us some likely scenarios based on past performance and the data that's been collected to date. And from there, we're able to act on it, whether it is to reach out to the sponsors and ask them to update things, if it's to provide recommendations on past experiences or so on. We want to be giving them that feedback in real time so they see us as not just their vendor that creates things, but rather we want them to see us as a partner that is giving them actionable insights. Uh, and as an example, our analytics team is using all of our QMS data to provide updated forecasts. So not just looking at our capas from the past, but they will look at projecting based on the capas we've had in the past, what is potentially coming down the pike. And it gives us an opportunity to be a lot more proactive. And we are then able to meet, figure out how we can prevent this from occurring before it ever takes place. And then we are able to put mitigations in place, whether that's the addition of people to oversee or whether they're systems and tools, we can make those things pro provided and we can make certain people have that to work on preventing those from ever actually coming to fruition. And Steve, as a mentor and leader, how are you shaping the next generation of quality leaders to ensure a legacy of proactive compliance? Our next generation of quality is really with us today. And they're here getting real world exposure to using analytics. They are learning about the benefits of proactivity in the industry and how much the industry really can't tolerate many mistakes. So I stress the importance of what we do, how vital they are to the process as people. And my hope is that they are holding on to all these lessons and that they learn to accept nothing less than complete excellence of themselves, those around them as well, because the criticality of our services is attached to people's well-being. And that lives, and, and there's people's lives on the other end of this. And we want to make certain that they understand it could be their parents, their children, extended family members, friends, colleagues, neighbors, or it could be them at some point in the future that need access to these very life-saving drugs that we are helping to bring to market with our technologies. So in essence, I'm really hoping that they are accepting the challenge that I push them towards every single day of excellence through prevention of things that can be prevented and eliminating the need to just react to things as they come up. And to wrap up, what advice would you give to other organizations looking to adopt a more proactive approach to quality in clinical trials? I'm asked this frequently, and I think I could offer a few bullets of things that we've done that have been helpful to us. I would say hire for fit and talent. Um, it's not really a wise decision these days to hire just for the talent or just for the fit. You really do need both those items working together in concert. Um, I would also say to ensure you're cultivating a continuous learning environment that allows everyone on the team to bring new ideas and learnings to the table so that everyone can review together and have discussions so you don't segregate that knowledge to just one person or just one team, but you have that across the organization and it never dies based on who's there and who isn't. Um, I would also say it's important to connect with others so that you can learn from their experiences across the organization. And that, of course, includes me. And then take that back to your teams and you can use that to incorporate in your data, your review models and continuous learnings within your organization. It probably makes sense to then share your experiences and the aspirations you have, the progress that you're making within your quality groups or operational groups with the leadership team, and then implore them to provide regular visible support across your organization uh, for that endeavor, and then keep everyone updated on the progress because I think people can really get excited about what's going on if they, one, know that they have the support from the very top down, and if they're constantly hearing about it, 
I think they will begin to buy into it more and more and really want to be a part of, of that collectively. And then have that leadership team agree on the definition of success for you and your team. And then they need to really hold everybody accountable for achieving those goals together because it really does take a village. You can't really make any of this happen with just one person or one team. You need everyone to be moving in concert with each other. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Certainly, you're very welcome. We look forward to learning more about Y Prime's work to improve quality in clinical trials. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion. <laughs>